Hi, my name is Yer Maysak. I am with the Center for Community Engaged Learning. And today I have Michael and Lori from Homeline. Um, Michael and Lori, could you both go ahead and introduce yourself and share a little bit about what you do with Homeline? So I'm Michael Dahl and I'm the Public Policy Director with Homeline, which means that usually I'm working on issues before the state legislature or working with the governor's office on things that would improve the lives of tenants through changes in laws that um, that sort of put more even balance between tenants and landlords um, in, in the legal sphere. I'm Lori Sandell and I'm a public policy intern at Homeline and Michael is my supervisor. I'm here on a program out of the University of Minnesota called HECUA, Inequality in America. And this has been such an interesting and wonderful experience. Can you share, um, either one of you share uh, a little bit more about Homeline, what its mission is, what you've been working on? We equip tenants um, with the resources that they need to be able to represent themselves in court when they have issues with their landlord. We also do ways, um, propose ways that they can negotiate with their landlord on issues so things don't have to go to court. And all of this is done through what is actually a primarily a program that are the program we're more, most known for, which is a tenant hotline. Tenants can actually contact Homeline um, to receive free legal confidential advice. And we advise over 15,000 tenants um, each year. Uh, this year has been a sort of a more difficult year because of COVID um, where we've had to pass along some information that is a little more in depth than just the usual legal ins and outs, but how to handle that situation with a pandemic going on. Um, we also do organizing with tenants. So if there are building wide issues that people need to have addressed, like they all don't, don't have heat um, and they need to work to get the landlord to follow through and provide some a basic service. We'll organize to, um, with tenants on issues like that. Um, we teach people, police officers, uh, um, students, uh, social workers, um, if they need to be kept up to date on what tenant landlord law is, um, we work on that. And then there's the public policy work that I do. The hotline is the one that I really wanna point out that as many students are renters, um, if you have an issue that you um, need advice on, call our tenant hotline and you'll get the help of a lawyer or a law student that's been trained on how to answer questions that you need help on. Can you share a little bit about maybe how that has shifted or what are some new things that you're seeing in light of COVID? I know that COVID has presented a lot of housing challenges for everyone in general. Um, so could you just share a little bit about how maybe that has changed the work or what are some new things that you're seeing? First and foremost, this economy is one that uh, has not hired back many of the workers that were laid off or furloughed when COVID first began. And so there's some tenants that uh, can't pay rent. And so if they contact us, we can let them know that the governor has uh, an executive order that's been renewed several times, allowing tenants to um, remain housed during this pandemic period not being evicted from their housing. That doesn't mean they're not responsible for paying the rent, but it means that an eviction can't take place until after the moratorium has been lifted. And for someone to know that is good. Um, we of course do tell tenants that if they can pay the rent or part of the rent to do so, to please talk with their landlord when a situation like this arises because it's easier to sort of make this a proactive versus a reactive situation. So that's one thing we do. The other thing is privacy related matters. Um, there are people that are very concerned about people coming into their homes when they may have a vulnerability that makes um, COVID even more of an issue for them. And so we um, talk about how adequate notice should be provided to them before a, a landlord or someone working for them, like someone who wants to make repairs, actually does so in a way that can help someone not be in the same room as someone else they might feel a little intimidated by in that situation. The only other thing I know is that every call we take is taking longer right. because there's not just the legal aspect of it all. There's this personal aspect of how did the current times um, impact them? And so while we're handling just as many calls, they're taking 
twice as long to handle. And we're more than happy to do that. It just means that there are volunteer experiences that we can actually provide people to help us um, address situations like this um, and the the increased call time that we're facing. Let's talk a little bit about the approach that Homeline takes. You're an advocacy organization. Can you talk a little bit more about like what that means or what that is? We do advocacy work actually before city councils, county boards, and my work primarily, although not exclusively, is on state issues. And what we find is that tenant landlord law changes very rarely. Um, And yet the technology that is available to landlords to find out the situation that their tenants have had or someone they're considering as a tenant may have Um, that really seem like they are out of balance with the times. Um, We think that there needs to be a much more level playing field, a better sort of equilibrium between the rights that tenants and landlords have. And so I work at the state to correct some of those items. So how long can a landlord look at someone's history to see whether or not they want to rent to them? Well, that's a main, main issue that I'm working on right now. And if someone has been evicted from a, a, a prior, um, or they've had a landlord had a complaint against them even, and took that complaint to court, even whether or not the, the tenant won, um, that appears on their record. And it might make a future landlord less likely to rent to them. Mm-hmm. And so, um, we're working on a issue, a couple of different issues in the at the legislature, um, or will be in this next legislative session to help sort of level the playing field on evictions and whether or not they get filed against someone to begin with. If financial assistance is available to help someone if they ha- they can't pay rent, and then also after that situation to um, make sure that something doesn't stay on someone's record so that it is forever a black mark on their. Um, on on their ability to rent in the future. Take us inside what a legislative session looks like. I know a lot of us have have never been to the Capitol, um, haven't been inside, are really even unsure what a legislative session is. You've been doing this for 20 plus years. Um, Give us a little bit of a look into what that looks like for you. Well, it looks a lot different now than it does uh, during normal times. Uh, I'm never meeting in person with a legislator um, uh, because of the COVID rules. We're often doing Zoom meetings (laughs) with legislators. And so we we call them up and we ask if we can have a meeting with them. And uh, and usually talk virtually face to face with them. Um, But a legislative session, first of all, just for folks to know, it's really, really easy to talk to your legislator. Um, And people don't understand the impact that you can have. I mean, anywhere from like five, 10, 15 calls or Zoom meetings with constituents about an issue that we care about and that Homeline is working on can have a tremendous impact. Um, because legislators often don't hear from people who are happy about the work that they're doing. It's usually a complaint. Why is this, why is this problem coming up with me? And why is there a law against this? But when we're working in an issue that can actually improve people's lives and tenants can call up and say, and students who are tenants can call up and say, this really would make it easier for me to live in the rental situation that I'm currently living in. Um, and, and to play a supportive role, that's gold. The legislative process, if you want to find out more about it, watch Schoolhouse Rocks, I'm Just a Bill, and it's going to give you the basics. Um, there's, a lot more that's, <laughs> there's a lot more that's confusing about that, but that's my job. The job of a volunteer or an intern isn't to know everything that goes on at the Capitol. Um, it's to be involved in some way that meaningfully um, connects a legislator to an issue that their constituents are facing. Let's talk a little bit about your job. We're talking about advocacy. Um, Would, you know, for a volunteer who might be starting at Homeline or at any advocacy organization who might one day aspire to um, do things that are similar to what you do, can you maybe share like what got you interested in advocacy or like what, what a career path kind of maybe looks like if that's something that um, students are interested in going into. First of all, I have supervised scores of interns um, in the time that I've been doing this work. And I know many of them who've gone into a field of social justice and advocacy um, as a result of work that they've done either through an internship or going to law school to learn about um, 
things are going to make improvements in real people's lives. So there is a career path. Um, mine is not the usual one. Um, oh, it's the best one. Good. Well, I actually got involved with the student organization at the University of Minnesota that doesn't exist anymore. Um, but uh, it taught me um, how to organize with students and then how to contact legislators about the issues that we cared about. So I received my training while I was at the University of Minnesota through student organizations that made this part of their work. And I very quickly after graduating actually got employed by that organization for a few years. But then a year after that, <laughs> I was the director for the Minnesota Coalition for the Homeless. Um, <laughs> I had so much to learn, but uh, I'll tell you, it was, it was, um, it was my experience learning about politics and advocacy while on campus and then um, being connected with an organization that led to me um, in this path. I have not gone to law school. My job is not to, to share the, the legal, the legalese um, with legislators. I rely on um, a coalition of people that I work with from a lot of different organizations to do that legal work. Now, if there are people that are aspiring to be um, uh, lawyers, go ahead and do that, but stay in the social justice field if that's something you care about. But if you're also interested just generally, how can I get to know about this work do an internship with an organization that cares about these issues. Um, that's your way to learn about the community that you might someday want to work in. And it's a great way to figure out, hmm, not my bag, or yes, it is. Um, and there's a lot of different organizations that do advocacy out there. So maybe housing isn't your issue. I certainly hope it is. But if, if it isn't, there are organizations working on environmental justice, um, racial justice, uh, a, a slew of different, if, different issues, and do an internship with them to figure out if that's a good fit for you. Speaking of internships, I'd like to ask Lori the same question of like, what what got you interested or where 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 are where do you plan to go with an internship with Homeline? What what are what's on the horizon for you or what what has brought you there? Well I I got my internship at Homeline, like I had said, through HECUA, which is a off-campus program um, in classes registered at the University of Minnesota. And um, I fell into the social justice field the semester prior to this by taking an art for change, social change um, class that was also a HECUA class. And I thought I was gonna learn more about the art field around, you know, and all this, what's going on in Minneapolis and St. Paul. And what I did is learned about my love for social justice and that that's something I wanna be about. So I took from that class, I came to this class and I was assigned to Michael at Homeline and it's been, I've been the luckiest intern I think that has been here. What I'm learning um, is amazing. Just, you know, the, the process of, of policy making, of representing people that you're, um, are in your community and that are gonna be impacted by the policies. It's just a wonderful, wonderful um, experience for me. And I think I'll stay in somehow with the public policy field. I'm curious to hear just a little bit more about like um, why advocacy or like you know what what can you achieve through advocacy and and the legislature that that you can't through other other you know channels. Um, it, this is something that Homeline focuses on, and so just you know wanting to hear a little bit more about that. I know sometimes students hear like you got to go lobby or we're going to go to the Capitol and maybe it sounds scary or maybe it sounds boring um, or maybe it's different. Um, so, you know, for someone who might be, I don't know what that is. Um, can you just share a little bit about that? First of all, advocacy is when you work on issues that impact a lot of people and you want to change policy to better represent your needs. So it's not the one-on-one -on -one counseling that our lawyers do. Um, it's not education. It's actually going to the uh, Capitol or doing a Zoom meeting with your legislator um, and telling them your story. Your story is what gets them to be concerned about, well, this might be the concern of other folks in my community as well. And maybe it turns into more meetings with other folks um, as well. But um, 
it really is the direct experience of constituents that that advocacy that asks for something to change in law to help make real improvements in their lives and that all starts by connecting with constituents like students at the U who may feel like they deserve better housing conditions or they have an issue with their landlord. Um, so that's what av advocacy is, is when people band together and they ask for something bigger, better than what the current law provides. Um, students are, and, and, and I have involved students in campaigns where we got $100 million devoted to affordable housing. Um, it was, was different with a different organization at that, at that time, but a lot of folks in a big coalition were asking for this. And the three interns I was supervising had a dramatic impact. Um, they helped my organization and me be more creative and more effective when we did our advocacy at the Capitol because they were able to do work that I simply couldn't. Um, and when I do an internship with someone, I do a beginning, middle, and end. They take a project from beginning to end so they can put it on their resume and say, I want to do this in the future. Advocacy has changed. If you think of this country's history, it's by organizing and advocacy that major changes have happened on everything from social security to food stamp programs to the war on poverty and the other things that were involved with that. It happened because people banded, banded together, said they had a common interest, and then they would demanded changes from, from their legislators and were able to make that happen. And students actually have been at the forefront at a, a number of those issues um, because you sort of have a little bit of the luxury of time, a little bit of uh, the know-how that you can get um, when you're at school, um, and also just this connection between classes and programs outside in the community that sort of make for an education to be a more rich, enriching experience. I feel like we're moving into like the next question that I wanted to ask is just sharing like what have been some of the celebrations and victories um, that, that you've experienced and seen to, you know, give, give us some hope for, for what's coming? I had a number of students at the University of Minnesota, some through the HECUA program, some through departmental advisors, um, turning people out away from the sociology and poli-sci departments um, on a tenant bill of rights that passed about 10 years ago. Um, it I don't remember the details, but we passed eight different things that we wanted changed in tenant landlord law. And one of the projects was actually a student who didn't know why she chose to intern with me. She was really scared about politics. And I saw her drawing these little sketches of legislators who are superheroes when they did, when they asked for this particular change. And I said, why don't we do these on big poster boards and give them to legislators whenever they've said something appropriate about more tenant, better tenant rights. And it was great. We had like 10 different posters that we presented to legislators and they felt great about it. and they, they posted it in their office, like something that made them proud as a, as a um, supporter of tenant rights. And we saved a number of issues um, that were on the chopping block um, uh, from happening because there's these legislators turned not just into sort of advocates for a change, but they were took a leadership role. And so it had like a legislator swooping in and helping pay the students debt that they had um, because they didn't lose something called the renter's credit. Um, uh, it, it was just an amazing experience that that um, that I'll never I'll never forget. I feel like that's a really beautiful intersection of art and and social justice as well. Yeah. Yeah, um, and, and it all happened because someone, a student brought her own skills to what advocacy meant for her. Let's talk about interns and volunteers. You know, I think we've seen the, the great work that Homeline is doing um, and the work that you're still con currently doing. Um, how can students plug into that? How can students support um, Homeline, how can students get involved in advocacy? 
Uh, interns, um, I believe there are some extended internships through di certain departments where you're supposed to give a couple hundred hours to an internship. And I, I need your help in the summer. I need that. I need students help in the summer and actually next academic year. Um, I, I always want as many interns as I can sort of give good capacity to um, through that. Um, and so they just need to apply to me and I'll, or give me a call and I'll figure out if we can fit them in. Now, volunteers, this is where I'm going to ask people to do that thing that's so uncomfortable and that's actually contact their legislator. And what I'm going to do is teach you how to do that in a way that is completely within the skills that you already have. Um, and then I'll keep you informed about how your work actually changed the dial somewhat um, throughout uh, what is a semester or a legislative session, how have we moved the ball forward. And you may, you may wanna do uh, something that's more than just a one-time 10 hour sort of volunteer experience. Um, uh, I, I, I do want someone who is willing to give enough time to learn about the issue and then enough time to do an action related to the issue. And, and we already heard that, you know, um, bring your skill set, bring your passion. There, there are so many different ways to reach out to your legislature, I, le legislators, as we saw with like art, that, that is a really touching way to reach out to someone. Mm -hmm. So that is, that's really awesome to hear. Lori, I'm, I wanna come to you and ask you, what has your experience been like? Um, what, you know, what, what's been, what have you been working on? What, what's your experience been like? How's it going? It's going great, really great. We had a big push when I first started and I had a learning curve that was really big, really quick, you know, a short period of time. Um, but Michael was perfect in supplying the information I needed to get through to understand the bigger picture. So then we started working on the policy applications, the proposal applications for policies and that was a big push. I started it, I went through the middle, went through the revisions with Michael and did the finished product. And he, that's what he submitted um, with his policy pitch to this coalition. And so it's such a feeling of satisfaction to be able to start, work through it and then finish it and see it's being used. I mean, so for me, that was just an amazing experience to feel so satisfied about it and also to have so much learning going on. It's a new field for me, but it's an exciting field for me. And as an older person and reinventing myself, um, this has been really exciting to come into a field that, you know, I'm going to start a new career on or a new, new life on because um, social justice just, I mean, it, once you get into it, I don't know how anybody ever could could leave that field. Lori, I just, I know you've touched on this a little bit, but I, I just want to go back to this of like, um, could you share, you know, from, from your experience now, um, what, what are some things that you have learned? Um, what are some skills and, and, you know, what are you, what have you been excited about? Well, first of all, the skills and the whole, you know, this whole zooming electronic and all of that and um, using the social media platforms to try and reach our legislators is something I'm working on right now. And um, uh, we're working on a gaming platform to do communications through the whole company, which was a new, new experience and had to learn a new skill there. Um, the uh, ability to work off-site in an internship change because I did an internship before but doing it this time having the skills to be able to to stay in touch but not have to be there all the time is something that I've learned how to do because that's not my experience before so and that was successful the um, issues I've learned about between home line and my classes one of the big ones right now that we're working on is evictions and there's over 100,000 possible pending um, evictions coming, you know, in the next four months. So Michael and I have been working on policies to protect the tenants and the renters so that they aren't just, you know, notified one day and then put out in the cold in the next few days. Um, so that's been something that's really, really um, caught my heart and my, my eyesight, and I'm going to be working on that, I think, in the future. Advocacy is a lot of hard work. 
Um, but Michael, you've been doing it for a long time and Laura, you're about to jump into it. So I, I think I would really love to hear just like, what's fun about advocacy? There's gotta be something awesome and fun about it that keeps you going. Um, what gets you excited about it? On the big scale, who at the end of the, who, who, who in a three month period can say, I just got a hundred million dollars <laughs> to help these people who need housing. No one has that. No one has that. Well, come an intern for me and maybe, but I mean, it's, that's, that's, <laughs> that is great. The other part is that you don't realize how easy it is to speak to a legislator. I often tell people that you are the expert because if you're experiencing a problem with a, a tenant landlord situation, you're the expert in that issue. But also that legislators are people and they love to be loved and they hate to be hated. So find a way to get that legislator just to, to, to be in the love camp, to where, to where they want to hear what you have to say because you matter. You know, to, to kind of wrap it up, right? We've been talking about, you know, the importance of advocacy or what does it look like and what does it mean? And so I think I'd just like to end on like advice from either one of you, both of you of for someone who might be interested or someone who's not interested, someone who wants to learn more, what pieces of advice do you have? I think, first of all, what I've learned, one of the most important things when I came into this internship, or even before I did this inter interview, the supervisor you're going to be working with is really important to so know that, that you're going to get along, that you're going to have something besides just do input and stuff like that. It's going to have real experience and real information coming your way of what that organization does. So when you do the interview with the organization, that's important. Um, if you're lucky, you'll get someone like Michael. Um, which has been a big change and a wonderful influence. And the other thing I would just say is, you know, check out Hecua, dive into your social justice issues, whether it's out marching or like me and behind the scenes, but it's all important because we need it all to happen right now and all of us to do work together. <laughs>